My name is Steve Wilson. I'm a county commissioner. And on behalf of other county commissioners and myself, Commissioners Anderson, Bucky, Moran, and Wilson, I'd like to introduce you to a video on the Sheriff's Department and law enforcement in Queen Anne's County. We, the commissioners, believe that the Sheriff's Department is a very well provided and operated department, which we are proud of as we are our other departments. Recently, we put out a video on emergency services, which we hope you also have a chance to take a look at, and in future months, we'll be putting out others on other functions of government. Altogether, we think these will be informative and helpful to the voter. Thank you for taking the time to look at these videos, and we hope you find them both instructive and interesting. Thanks. The purpose of this video is to give you, the viewer, an overview of your Queen Anne's County Office of the Sheriff and give you a quick and basic understanding of the services they offer the community. This is the Office of the Sheriff. So you may ask, why are we making this video? The public's demanding, and they should be. It's important that we put out as much information as possible using QAC TV for public safety announcements, as well as our Most Wanted show, also making sure that our Facebook, our Twitter, and the local newspapers are very well informed. The reasons we're doing this are that government function has gotten a great deal more complex as years have gone by. And in order to have the voters be informed and able to make good voting and, and input decisions to us commissioners, we think it's important for you to know the complexity of the undertakings which government is doing for you these days. In this video, you'll see the multiplex tasks which the Sheriff's Department performs for you, the citizens, in terms of guarding courts, minding the safety of the schools and public buildings, law enforcement generally, criminal investigation, and drug suppression and enforcement. All those things are tasks which have gotten markedly more complicated as time has gone by. Yeah, I was with another department for several years and then came over here to the sheriff's office and I was very surprised, pleasantly, about um, how many things the sheriff's office is into and, and how many resources we provide the community. So let's start with some basics. What is the office of the sheriff? Well, the sheriff is actually an officer of the court and uh, the sheriff dates back to the Magna Carta and is actually the highest elected official in the county. The court depends on the sheriff for serving its process but uh, also for providing security to the court and the citizens that utilize their court. So that's the background of the office of the sheriff. So where is the office of the sheriff today? Our current sheriff, Gary Hoffman, took office for his first term in December of 2006 and was re-elected in 2010 and 2014. The Queen Anne's County Sheriff and approximately 65 deputies patrol the 372 square miles of Queen Anne's County and provide police services to the estimated population of 48,000 residents and tourists and commuters 365 days a year from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge to the Delaware State Line. The patrol section is broken up into six individual sectors. The first sector being Ken Island, Sector 1. The second sector being Chester and Graysonville, Sector 2. The third sector, which is very large, is actually an area of Queenstown up to Roosburg. We have now added two additional sectors. We have Sector 5, which runs on the north side of 301 to Kingstown. And then we have Sector 6, which runs from the south side of 301 all the way to Templeville and north to the Delaware line. The structure of the Queen Anne's County Office of the Sheriff consists of 13 individual units. One is the command staff. We have four squads of deputies that patrol. We have the courts and civil unit, the criminal investigations unit, a resource unit, a drug task force, booking officers, a headquarters staff, as well as four canine units. This agency also consists of 13 volunteer deputies. A typical week at the office of the sheriff begins with a command staff meeting. This allows us to better allocate law enforcement resources on a weekly basis. So if we see a crime trend starting, 
we actually deploy manpower towards that area. So if speeding is a big issue in neighborhoods, we'll address that this week. If that problem subsides and we've got break-ins or we have something else going on, what we will do is we will redeploy our manpower as needed. Plus, our weekly meetings give us crime stat information as well as personnel updates and kind of an overview of what the county's doing. Most deputies do follow-ups themselves, and a lot of times they'll come to the substations that we have or they'll come to the office to do those follow-ups to contact the victims, to do research, or to submit evidence. Some of the more complex cases, though, are handled by our Criminal Investigations Division. Made up of eight full-time investigators. Uh, two of those investigators are undercover investigators. Two supervisors, a sergeant and a corporal, and six uh, plain clothes investigators. They get cases that are more complex. It might be your more serious assaults, it might be burglaries, child abuse investigations, things that are really going to take a lot of time. Our detectives, you know, work everything from, you know, a uh, chainsaw stolen from a shed all the way up to uh, a homicide, a, a murder. We don't want to tie up a patrol officer who's handling call after call after call to be handling those lengthy investigations. And that's where the expertise from the Criminal Investigations Unit comes in. Our resource unit is a group of specialized deputies that deal with long-term community concerns and issues. These deputies that are assigned to this unit may actually be doing underage alcohol enforcement. They may be doing community events that may be lengthy. They may be doing something as simple as saturating an area during the 4th of July fireworks, providing patrols. With this unit comes also a core group of volunteer deputies that we have here at the office called our Auxiliary Deputy Program. These are volunteers from within our own community that come out to volunteer their time to help us. This one adds manpower, adds visibility, adds an extra layer of protection, but is provided at no cost to the taxpayers. We have deputies that patrol the schools. They're our Sheriff's Resource Officers. We have one in each high school, and then we have two sheriff's resource officers that rove the middle and elementary schools, both in the South County and also in the North County. These deputies are responsible for the day-to-day -day security of the schools, as well as kind of being the liaison between the school, the parents, and the sheriff's office. They're really handy. They are the ones who are the observers, keeping our kids safe. They do programs within the schools as well, participate in character counts, and also do a lot of great events um, involving our kids, anything we can do to keep our kids safe. The school has been instructed in an emergency situation to dial 911 so we can get multiple law enforcement agencies to the school to assist. But the sheriff's resource officer is the contact at the school. So if something's going on in the school like canine scans or things like that, that sheriff's resource officer is involved in those scans of the school. They're also involved in parking lot patrols. They're involved in walking the hallways. They're a liaison between the students, the teachers, and the sheriff's office. We get a lot of great information and a lot of preventative information from the students in the schools. They really are the lifeline to the sheriff's office. We have four canine units. Those deputies have been assigned canine dogs. Those dogs actually live with the deputy. They patrol with the deputy and we use those in several different capacities. Uh, the initial training usually lasts um in total, it's about 16 weeks. Um, they have a, uh, quicker programs where you do longer days, which is four weeks, um, which is what I attended up in Pennsylvania. Um, then upon coming back after we certify, um, we do 16 hours a month. Um, so every single month we do that. We have two eight-hour training days. We use them for searching if we need to find someone. We also use them for drug interdiction as well as drug scans of vehicles. And they're also used for patrol functions for example, if we had a burglary in a building in the middle of the night, you could actually, for officer safety reasons and location-wise, send the dog in to find the suspect. You know, he's one of the best partners you can have. You know, he, he's quiet in the car, he doesn't talk. <laughs> so, I think a lot of people have the um, perception that all police dogs, you, you know, are, are nasty dogs, you can't pet them and stuff like that. So it's nice to be able to come out here and the kids and the parents are all surprised when, you know, their little child is hugging all over a police dog and the dog's licking and stuff like that. So it's good to be able to show them that, you know, it's, it's a big separation between work and play to them. One of our most important constitutional duties is getting documents out for the court. This occurs through our civil process unit as well as our warrants unit. The court depends on the sheriff for serving its process but uh, also for providing security to the court. This provides security for the patrons, the employees, 
as well as the judge. The administrative staff is responsible for logging in all of the papers that come in from both the district court and the circuit court. In our civil process unit, these papers are then sent out to the street to be served by a deputy. The deputy might be serving something as simple as divorce documents, something as simple as a levy, a writ, or possibly even a body attachment. At that time, they would take a person into custody and bring them to the office. The SWAT team is comprised of deputies who volunteer for this position. The SWAT team is utilized, it's a special weapons type team that is able to do entries into homes, protect our schools, and also our local businesses and community. This unit is not often used for those purposes, but it is always used for drug raids. We know that drug dealers carry guns, and it's important to protect the community members when a raid goes down, as well as protect the deputies that are responding into the scene. Most of our stuff is drug raids. We're doing a lot of stuff with our criminal investigations unit now and regular patrol call. I'd say average probably about once a month is what we're being used at. Maybe, a, you know, give or take a little bit here or there, depending. Being prepared is probably one of the most important things that any law enforcement agency can do. And to do that, you have to have the proper tools to make sure that you keep the community safe. A lot of the equipment that we use to do these extra duties is funded by grants or the Department of Justice or we use what we call military surplus stuff. Anything we can use to reduce the cost to the taxpayer, but provide us some of the best equipment out there to serve our community. Some of the things that we've taken advantage of that we currently use is a gyrocopter, which is considered an aircraft, provided at no cost to the taxpayers. The gyrocopter is something that can assist us in finding Alzheimer's patients, lost children, can do searches of shoreways, um, it can also assist us in locating marijuana grows, assisting the drug task force. Um, the aircraft has been very beneficial and also a lot of allied agencies actually ask us to use the gyrocopter. We also use this aircraft to photograph critical infrastructures in our county. We've used this to make sure that we have current and up-to-date photos of all of our schools and other critical infrastructures. We're surrounded by water. Kent Island is actually an island. One of the other tools that is so important is to have a boat that's available. The boat was supplied through a Homeland Security grant at no cost to our taxpayers. Although it's not the fanciest boat that's out there, it's a Zodiac rubber raft. Um, this boat can actually be used to patrol the waterways when needed or requested by other agencies. This boat can also be used in search and rescue things to assist local fire companies. And this boat can also be used when there are special events being held in the Kent Narrows. Some of the tools most people don't think about are things that we need to access locations in the county that are very remote. We have a gator for this, which we use to patrol the trail. We actually also use a motorcycle that has off-road capabilities. And one of the tools that we use is an armored personnel carrier, also known as the MRAP. This is used for flooded roads, this is used for snow, and this is also used to deploy our SWAT team. The Using the gyrocopter, the boat, and the SWAT team, the deputies volunteer for this. It's all extra duty that the deputies do. While they're normally on patrol, they could be called to assist in one of these other functions. Yeah, we're part-time. If anything happens, uh, we have guys that are assigned to various units of the office. Uh, I'm, a, I'm part of the patrol division, so uh, most of the time I'm here at the office or out. In addition to the regular duties, deputies are consistently being trained and given current updates. Everything from classes at the FBI National Academy, allied agency training, gang training, drug training, and so many other things. The deputies are consistently and constantly being trained in all different areas to better serve our community. So that's how the sheriff's office is structured. So what happens when you call 911? It's getting 911's location emergency. When a 911 call is received, it goes to the Emergency Operations Center in Queen Anne's County. What they do is they dual dispatch that call over the Maryland State Police, the Centerville Police Frequency, as well as ours. And the closest responding unit actually is deployed to that location when there's a call that comes out. All those all those calls are managed by the Emergency Operations Center. In a critical incident like the snowstorms that we had or we have floods, we will actually deploy a person to the command center out at the Emergency Operations Center. 
We have a great working relationship and partnership with them. All of our deputies are assigned patrol beats. So when they come out for service, a certain deputy is in a certain patrol area. That helps minimize response time. The duty officer is actually the sergeant or corporal who is here in the building who is managing their shift. That duty officer is aware of the situation when it goes out uh, through the emergency operations center. They're notified and then what the duty officer does is they monitor the situation. If the officer on the scene needs support, then what the deputy will do is get guidance and supervision from that duty officer. Although all calls in the county are a priority to respond to, the dispatch center gives us the call and then deputies respond on a level of priority first. For example, a serious assault or domestic violence case is going to take a higher response code and priority over possibly a stolen bicycle. Although all calls are important to us, we have to prioritize who gets the law enforcement officer first. Although the county is 372 square miles, and although it may only seem that there's seven deputies working plus a supervisor, we have a contingent of other law enforcement as well. We have the Centerville Police Department, we have the Maryland Transportation Authority Police Department, Department of Natural Resources Police Department, as well as the assistance of the Maryland State Police. We try to utilize in a big emergency situation any available unit, but if somebody calls to the Sheriff's Office specifically for a stolen bike or something like that, then we will send the next available deputy as soon as they are free. So we know what happens when we call 911. What happens when someone gets arrested? Behind the scenes, people always see the prisoner being escorted away, but what they don't know is what happens to the prisoner afterwards. With every case that's generated comes successful prosecution. But one of the key components in that prosecution is the proper storage and maintaining of evidence. This is critical to the agency and critical to any case of a law enforcement officer. The prisoner is brought to headquarters, they're fingerprinted, they're photographed, all the appropriate paperwork is given, all the charges are done, and the prisoner is either held for a short period of time then taken before a judicial commission. So there you go. Now you know how the Sheriff's Office patrols the county, how the Office of the Sheriff is structured, what happens when you call 911, and what happens when someone is arrested. For further information on the Queen Anne's County Office of the Sheriff, visit their website or Facebook page or feel free to contact the Sheriff at the number on the screen. Before we leave, the Sheriff has one last message. The citizens of Queen Anne's County can be confident that the Sheriff's Office is always available to serve. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. If you need us, we'll be there.